Hi, it's Tom from FDS here. Hopefully this is all in frame properly because my phone's dead and uh, I've got no way of looking at the screen to see where the camera's pointing. Uh, today we're going to be looking at this which is uh, the Alpha Kit and we're going to be looking at Hypo Springer cleaning and a little bit of Alpha Kit tuning. And there's a couple of things that I've done to this that make it different to the standard layout. I thought I'd show you those while I prepare it for a game. Now this cleaning regime will cover all the things that you need to do um, post game, a couple of things that are worth trying in game and uh, generally how to prepare your Springer uh, for a nice long life. Obviously I've already opened it up and uh, the first thing to do is just to slide the jam door out of the way if you have one. I know Exusus don't have them for some reason. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the plunger tube but first I'm going to just unscrew the barrel. Now I know some people have had problems with the Exus barrels coming loose. I've got the opposite problem. Mine's held in nice and tightly by the tape at the front. Um, but unfortunately I think I've probably got a little bit of lean to the left so I'm going to make a new shim in here for in between the barrel. If anyone knows of a nice 3D printed uh, barrel that I can get or a, a plastic barrel where it will take this inner dimension instead of faux barrel that would be great. So if you've got a link to one of those do pop it up. I'm always keen to find those kinds of things. Now the advantage about having a tight fit between the um, barrel and the barrel extension is that the barrel doesn't come unscrewed easily and fall out. I know some people have had trouble with this seal here. Obviously you can add a little bit of PTFE, which is a good use of PTFE to that. And you can see here that where this stupid e-tape that I put in for the last game is, that that is gonna cause alignment problems. And uh, I've had a little bit of a swing to the left on this with it on full thread, and I've just had to compensate through the sights. So, we'll do the barrel separately in a minute, and uh, I'm just gonna start with the plunger tube. So, and the bolt. So we'll start by taking the cap off, and then we'll have a look in here inside the plunger tube. Now, um, if we disassemble that. So obviously, you need to check each component as you take it off. What we're gonna start with is the naming of parts, which is a common thing that people always seem to say different things. So I'm gonna go with what I use. Um, this is the bolt, and this is a pusher bolt because it pushes the, bar, the, the dart into the breech. So that's the bolt, that is the bolt cup, and that's the bolt cup seal. And then this is the breech, which is the part that actually loads the dart from the bolt. This is the bolt carrier. Some people call it a bolt sled. You can call it a bolt sled if you want, because it does look a bit like a sled. Um, this is a stock bolt carrier, because the one that was with my alpha kit was useless, and I threw it in the skip. Um, apparently, they've improved the design of their bolt carrier, but um, I haven't tried the new improved one, because I'm only buying that kit once. So there you go. There's those. And then, obviously, your barrel. And in this case, this is functional barrel as opposed to faux barrel, which is the wide yellow Nerf stuff. Um, and then we would have the trigger. Then we would have um, back here, we've obviously got the catch. This is a stock catch spring. It's another thing that I always do. Um, I don't bother with high power catch springs because when you set the um, stroke length up correctly, you'll never have a problem. This is the plunger tube. And obviously inside is the plunger head and the plunger rod. And then this is the plunger tube end cap. And in this case, it's a screw-in threaded end cap. And um, some of the other kits have stupidly replicated the standard Nerf system with its two external screws, which why you would do that is beyond anybody here. But there we go. And uh, we're going to start um, by looking at the bolt cup. And what you do with the bolt cup, my modifications to the bolt cup, the standard bolt cup, as it comes from um, the Alpha kit, has a step between the cup head and the bolt tube. And that step is just a straight edge. And what I've done is I've radiused this. If I had more time, I would have radiused it a little bit deeper. And um, so what you want to do is you want to turn that into a nice smooth venturi there because steps are really bad for airflow. Um, you don't need to worry too much about the bore because the bore is actually not that bad on this. But what the issue is, is remove the step. Then you fit the orange O-ring. And you can see this O-ring's got a good layer of uh, lubricant still on it. And you want the O-ring needs to be able to move. Okay, it's a sliding O-ring, it's not designed to be a tight fit in there. If your O-ring is too tight, then change the O-ring because you want a nice, easy, smooth prime. And in order to get that, uh, you're going to want a good fit. So, um, then we move on to how we service that is literally, I use a bit of, this is just a quartered um, kitchen towel, which is something that you'll need. And also you'll need a um, pull through, in this case a rod. This is just a garden cane with a small eyelet screwed into the end. You can buy an airsoft pull through, they're quite good. You can use a 22 pull through, you can use a 410 rod kit and pull through if you've got a small shotgun kit. They're quite good because they've got the mops which are a good size for 0.50. Um, but I just use this because I have it lying around. You have to be careful that this doesn't scratch the inside of the barrel and we'll come on to that later. And then the other thing that you need 
Uh, I use this, which is 3-in-1 dry silicon lubricant, which is a useful general cleaner. Um, you can also use some Brasso wadding if, you, if your barrel and tube haven't been polished. And uh, I'll come on to that in a minute. So I'm going to start by just quickly cleaning up to be careful with the silicon spray that it doesn't get everywhere. Just put a little bit on your rag. And uh, this is quite a good general cleaner as well. It just removes excess lubricant. I'll just clean the back of the plunger head there like that. And I'm going to set it to one side once I've removed any dirt. And remember, this kind of cleaning should be done after every game because you're going to pull a lot of junk um, through the system, particularly the barrel. So the next thing to do is to dismantle your plunger head. And obviously these have got those slots in and you just gently unscrew in the alpha kit. And then we're going to come on to another modification that I've made to the jet kit. Now I only use a 10 kilo spring because I don't want to be a weight lifter. I'd rather be lazy and have a nice easy prime. Now here's the first modification I've made. I use a much lighter O-ring. The O-ring that's included in the kit is junk. It bends up like this in the middle and it folds and then it jams itself in the kit. When last time we were out at BB, there was at uh, FFS, there were at least three O-ring failures that I saw where people had various problems with their O-rings. Um, either the day before while they were setting up or on the day. And I had one person whose weapon went out of use as, because of the failure of their um, O-ring. So that is the O-ring from a tap washer if you're in the UK. If you're in America, look for an appropriately sized uh, O-ring and you want it a bit of wiggle in there. And that forms a really nice seal and that keeps your piston head moving fast. The other thing I did was I threw out the screw here that, uh, that retains the plunger tube. Don't use the stock Alpha Kit sp screw, it's too big. Um, get one with a correctly sized head that fits inside the plunger tube aperture and uh, that's the right length. And um, that's what I did and I haven't regretted that and I actually, it actually failed on me uh, in testing when I first set it up. And what I've done is I've devconned the plunger head on. Don't get it too long because it will break through. Where you see where the screw thread is in the um, centre of the plunger rod, you don't want to break through that. And that's been fairly consistently strong. Okay, so that brings us uh, to modifications to the plunger tube. And uh, you can see that there's scoring down the inside of the plunger tube in this direction, which is what you don't want. And that's caused by the drawing of the tube. Um, and it's a drawn aluminium tube. And you really want to remove that. And the best way to do that is to use a block honing um, attachment on the drill. And if you look up a honing, honing tool, uh, they come in different diameters. I used one that was the right size for the diameter here. Measure that diameter and then get a, uh, get a honer that will fit inside. And the honer goes on the end of your drill. There's lots of videos on how to use honing tools on the internet. Go have a look at those. I used WD-40 as a lube and then I strip cleaned all the WD-40 with a solvent wash and the grit. So I solvent washed it all in thinners. And then after the thinners had evaporated, I then used a buffing pad on the inside. I used a buffer on my drill, a little mi micro buffer to buff the inside of the tube and that improves the seal, improves the piston velocity and it gives you a really nice sealing surface for your o-ring. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to remove the grip from inside the plunger tube if there's any got in there just to spray a silicon again. You've got to be careful with that stuff, it goes everywhere. And then just take the wad of paper and then I'll use my pull through and I'll just push that through. Now you'll see that's removed quite a lot of black residue and that is the oxidisation that occurs inside the aluminium tube and that's just a layer of aluminium oxide. So that's why polishing is a good idea because you can remove that. You don't want a shiny finish in there, that's actually not as good for a seal. You want a cross, a cross uh, patterned finish made by the honer. So you move the honer, when you're honing you have the honer running that way and you move the barrel up and down the honer like that so that it creates a, a nice cross groove pattern in your plunger tube. So I can check now and just make sure there's no grit. So you sight down the plunger tube to make sure it's free of grit. And if it's nice and free of grit and there's no little marks or scratches, then you're ready to reassemble. Obviously you've cleaned the plunger head of any old lubricant. And then I'm gonna use this, which is a silicon um, and PTFE grease for seals. And this is quite thick, but it's also not so thick that it's going to slow the piston down too much and just a very very light run of that grease again be careful with silicon when you get it on your fingers it can be really hard to remove so if you're doing any painting or anything the same day as you're servicing your springer and um, wear gloves while you do the springer and then throw the gloves away before you handle anything because you don't want to get silicon onto anything else so obviously and gently slide that in now to demonstrate with the seal if i block the end 
quite hard to demonstrate with it all together actually. Um, it does seal that O-ring into there really nice. I've had a really good seal and you can see from my performance figures that that was working really well. I was getting over 200 feet per second out of a little tiny spring. It's not a big spring, 10 kilos. And then obviously just tightening up the plunger end cap. Don't go too mad on it because it's only made of plastic. You just want to turn it in just so it's tight so it doesn't loosen itself and it's nice and flush there to allow that to move backwards and forwards. And then that should give you a nice little thin film onto your onto your plunger head. You don't want like a thick wad. So we can now do the o-ring on the just do a little bit of lube on the o-ring here. So the o-ring on the bolt cut. Again, don't go mad. Grease works best in a thin film. You don't need a lot of it. It'll spread itself out in the tube. And you just want a thin load on the wall, otherwise it forms a sticky seal which you don't want. So you can just check that, that, ease that in. Be careful when you ease the seal in that it doesn't do what it's doing there where it'll just swell up and form. A, so that is a now a nice seal. And that seal hasn't formed an O. It's all good and smooth. So I'm ready to loop the bolt carrier. Again, just mind, be mindful that obviously you're getting a thin layer of silicon on your hands. So as you go along, just be careful. So again, just a tiny bit of silicon in the run for the carrier. Don't want to slather it in there. It'll pick it up as it goes and run some in there. A little bit in the rail and then this has obviously got the long tail on it so you can see there's a bit of contact been hanging down here we'll just cover the points of contact and again just along this little edge a little bit there you don't need a lot less is always more with grease Okay, we can install that into there and then it's always worth also just putting a light layer of lubricant on the sealing o-ring. I forgot to do that. I'll just gently lift that plunger tube out. Always forget the sealing o-ring on, on the pusher end of the bolt. You, know, you want just a thin coat on there. You have to be really careful with that because it will pick grit up. So that's one thing to be aware of is that, uh, and we'll come to in-game maintenance as well in a minute. So. Just get all of that seated nicely. Most common cause of problems with these is that people don't get the bolt carrier all nicely lined through before they close the shell and then they wonder why it won't prime smoothly and that's because the bolt carrier isn't in the right place. Okay, so I've set the barrel aside so I can work now on the, uh, on the barrel and bolt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread that in. Remember with the barrel, they do have a way round. This thread is slightly longer or it looks longer, so you just make sure you put the longer thread into the, uh, into the breech because I think that gives it a much better location. I'm just going to do that so that while I clean it. Now, when you're in a game, this is a trick that's well worth doing. So what you need is quarter squares of kitchen towel to go through the end of your pull through and you're not being too scientific about it. I just roll them up and then pull them through the little eyelet. So I'll just make one of these. Ah, so you put it through the eyelet. If you're using a different type of pull through, you may have to mess about with your rag a little bit. And then just unwind the ends a bit. I find a quarter sheet just makes a good fit in the barrel. You can also use this to polish the inside of your barrel. So before you do any of this stuff, the inside of your barrel, as it comes from the factory, will want polishing. So if you're polishing that, what I use is I put Brasso wadding on the ends of these, and Brasso is just a metal polish, and you work the metal polished rod up and down inside, and then change for clean a rag like this. Now the next thing you do is just a little bit of silicon spray into the barrel. I put a rag in the other end just to catch any surplus spray so it doesn't go on your bench. So there's a rag in the end. If you're doing this in the field, just spray a bit on the rag away from anything that you don't want to get slippery because it makes a real mess. If you get it on the floor, it can be really slippery. So just put a little bit of silicon spray in there and then pull through, goes in, and then right down, out the back of the breech, and then turn and come all the way through 
and that will give you a good pull through and you can see that that has actually lifted now I keep this lubricated all the time that's actually already lifted some gunk out of there I've shot a few darts through it recently so for me rodding through the barrel is an essential at the end of every game um, and actually I do this every about 150 shots so if there's a gap in your game like over lunchtime or whatever rod your barrel through and if you're picking darts off the floor and loading them in your mags if you get a minute try and rod through at the end of every game so you don't want to put that grip back into the barrel so you want to take the first one away and then go and use a fresh swab after the first swab and you've got the grit out you're just polishing a little bit so you can then be a bit more circumspect you don't have to worry so much about uh, getting the grit back into the barrel so you want to take all the grit out of the barrel and then give it a really good even coat of silicon on the inside so that it's got a really nice of shiny silicon on the walls and this silicon dries out so it won't sit there um, causing problems and it won't hurt plastics rubbers anything like that it's all good for those and the reason that I've left the breach on is because you can sometimes get grit in this area and that is the sealing area for the seal so you really don't want grit in where the where the breach seals I'll just put a little bit in from this end and then just rod through and back and again, that has lifted a little bit more. You can do this with it actually on the on the blaster as well. So you can do this quickly between games. Open the open the um, bolt so that there's clear it's clear back from the breach. Run the rod down. Whatever you do, don't run it through your scar barrel. If you've got a scar barrel, especially a fishing line scar barrel like this excellent one from Blaster Tech, uh, which incidentally anybody who knows my who knows my feelings about spin, uh, this one I keep the line straight because mine I'm undersprung and all I'm using it for is the barrel porting. Um, I found it actually with the eight kilo, with the 10 kilo spring, it's not as good with a, more, than a, more than one click. So I very rarely put spin on, um, but this is an excellent porting device and it also allows adjustment. So this is a much better than the fixed um, twist barrels because the twist in rifling is related to the um, weight of the projectile and the barrel length. Um, obviously this is a fairly long-ish scar um, it's not got a very long strung area and also the spring weight so if you've got a really high spring weight you can get away with more twist if you've got a low spring rate you can't have as much twist so if you've bought a fixed scar which has got a set twist over its length then the likelihood is that it's not going to be performing ideally for whatever setup you've got so my advice is always buy an adjustable scar don't buy fixed and especially if you can get a ported one you're onto a winner because that's going to reduce muzzle blast because these are too short the alpha kit barrel so there you go that is how you clean your barrel and then obviously now all you've got to do is carefully reassemble your blaster and the things you should take in your field kit are barrel pull throughs rod silicon lube that's all you need dry silicon spray you can also use the same tools if your mags get dirty in game and you get stuck for a minute you can always give them a clean over with that afterwards and then obviously for your seal lube bit of silicon and ptfe um, and when you do your assembly and that is literally all you need so I'm going to put this back together because I've got a game tomorrow and uh, I'm going to crack on